Hello and welcome back. I'm 74.666. This is Lost Faith in Politics. Today we're going to have a look at what the Ark of the Covenant really is. The best person to really help us understand is Arthur Edward Waite. He was an occultist and a Freemason of the highest order and the founder of the Fellowship of the Rosy Cross. He also made some tarot cards. He authored many books um, about tarot and their origins. In episode 1 we looked at the tetraformation of God's name and the pictoglyphic meanings from the hieroglyphs in the original language that is written within. In episode 2 we associated the Ten Commandments with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life and showed what the menorah really looked like. Some of the Ten Commandments we take for granted as if we know what they mean and it's written in stone. The Ten Commandments were originally written with four letter long words. Murder would actually be to have a unstable mindset or a destructive mind. Thou shall not steal originally meant people. This would be the slave trade. We look at the slave trade in Islam and the foundation of the new world. It's no wonder that we forgot what it really meant. The four suits in the tarot cards. These are representative of the four letters within each of the Ten Commandments. Because these cards were written by a Jesuit, there's the Holy Grail, Aaron's Rod, there's pentacles representing the Sephira, and there's a sword representing King Arthur or military. The Mithra mosaic above, I believe, represents the four suits of tarot as they originally were. The magician card has all the suits laid out on the table. When we lay out the cards on the table in a Kabbalistic tree of life, we end up having two and a half cubit in length, one and a half cubit in breadth. The table is made of shit in wood and is one and a half cubits from the ground. The same as in menorah, the Zohab would actually mean of importance and not gold. Four court cards in the four suits make the four corners the rings on the corner of the Ark of the Covenant. Staves would be bows and a chain from the Temple of Solomon. It would also incorporate Aaron's rod. Cherubs on top of the tree would be the archangels on top of bows and a chain. Uh, they didn't make it in the Bible or into Islam. Um, they mean the keeper of secrets and the keeper of wisdom. Only a select few people would actually know what it really was. The brief definitions that uh, Waite gave us as a Jesuit of what each of the cards mean uh, tie hand in hand with what the Ten Commandments were and give us additional meaning. I am your God is represented by manifestation, creation, mental clarity and attraction. Thou shalt not murder, insecurity, disagreement or conflict, tension and hostility and loss or challenges. This makes a map of the social consciousness. The full card shows someone walking along the street with the Ark of the Covenant and nobody would even notice. Because the cherubim mean keeper of secrets, it's not for everybody to know. What a great cover-up excuse that it's just card games. Nobody would ever know that it's actually representative of the Ten Commandments or the social consciousness that we can be manipulated by using. The church and Islam and Judaism will all condemn the use of tarot cards. This is because they don't want anyone to really work out what it really means. Because if everybody understood, then the actual social consciousness map would have no power. I repeat, these cards were designed by a Jesuit. Anna Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark showed how the Germans wanted to use the Ark of the Covenant as a weapon of war. This comes from all the religions saying that's what it could have been used for. Through the manipulation of the social consciousness and the propaganda, it's kind of like a chessboard, but going straight to the social consciousness. The Grail is the same as the pot of manna within the Ark of the Covenant. It's a roadmap of how to directly manipulate the social consciousness into war, and how to profit from it. We'll cover more on the bloodlines in later episodes. An example of how the Ark of the Covenant was misused in modern time was the Iraq War. How the whole world stood up against the prospect of war in Iraq. In Sephira 7 and Sephira 8 stands a tarot card. This would move from mercy, victory and mercy, into severity of war. The tarot card that sits between these two Sephira means a catastrophic disaster at home. And that's what we saw. And the picture is eerily similar to what the actual 9-11 looked like. Please remember, these cards were written by a Jesuit and a Freemason of the highest degree. The Ark of the Covenant also explains how fake news works, what the Bilderberg agenda is. If you like what I'm saying, please don't forget to like and share. You can also follow me on Twitter.